Hi, this is Lizzie Lundgren. I am a member of the Geoschem support team. I'm going to go over today setting up the GCPy Python package on a Mac. Um, if you don't have a Mac, then stay tuned for a later tutorial that will help you out. Um, okay, so getting started. Um, first, a, a bit about GCPy. It's our new Python package that replaces IDL GAMAP, which you may be familiar with using with the binary diagnostics. Now that we have NetCDF diagnostics, we're switching over to open source code for processing your data and creating data visualizations. And so that's going to be in Python, and we use GCPy to benchmark Geos Chem. So to get started, um, we recommend that you get Anaconda. Anaconda is a package manager uh, that's freely downloadable from the internet. You might already have it, um, but if you don't, you go to this website, click download, and follow the instructions for your system. So once you do that, um, I'm not gonna, it, it takes a little bit to set up, so I'm not gonna go through that, but um, I'll show you what you should see in the end. So if you open a terminal uh, and you go to your bash profile, actually, let me do no window. Um, you'll see something like this. Actually, I'm gonna. So when I open terminal, I get a login node, um, and I'm actually gonna create a new terminal window for this, so it's a little bit bigger. Um, so you can do ls.a to see your hidden files. Um, if you open bash profile you will see a bunch of code added by Anaconda 3 installer. Uh, you can see I did this last December, um, and it's just got a bunch of stuff there. So you know, it's all set. You can also find where it was installed by doing which Anaconda. Um, and there it is. So once you have Anaconda, um, you're going to need to get GCPy. So let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this from scratch. I'm gonna create a demo folder, um, and then in demo I'm going to clone GCPy. So git clone git at github.com geoschem GCPy GCPy. You can call this whatever you want. This other part. Um, I have SSH keys on GitHub, so I can use this git at github.com. However, you can also do git clone, https, github.com, geoschem, gcpy. Uh, this should work as well. Okay, so now we've got gcpy. You go into it, you can see readme. Um, if you go into... GCPy, it's not there. Max requirements, not there. Docs. Okay, so there's an environment.yaml file which lists all of the requirements for Python. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a virtual environment using this environment.yaml file. And you can do this anywhere um, in your directory structure. It's going to create the environment within the Anaconda folder. So to do this, um, I'm going to do con first. I'm going to do uh, which Python? Okay, so I know I'm using the Anaconda three Python. Then I'm going to do conda and create. This is creating a virtual environment. I'm going to name it something. I'm just going to call this, uh, I'm going to call it GeosChem because GCPy is already taken. Um, then I'm going to pass it the environment.yaml file. I just used, I just um, tab completed there. That's why it happened so fast. So do conda and create. 
and this is going to take a little bit of time. So while that's going on, I want to show you a little bit of GCPy on GitHub. If you go to this address up here, geoschem slash gcpy, this is the main page for gcpy. Um, what I want to bring your attention to is the second tab, issues tab. You can see there's zero open issues, but there are actually some closed issues that are just not shown. You can click on this closed and see the history of issues that people have created for gcpy. And all of these issues have conversations within them that go through how to resolve the issue. So if you run into an issue with GCPy, I suggest that the first thing you do is look at this tab and look to see if somebody else has had this issue. You can also Google your issue with Geoschem GCPy and it might show up that way and bring you to this page. Um, and then if you don't see the issue here, I recommend creating an issue because then all of us on the support team will get notified. Um, other people in the community might also get notified if they're watching this repository and they might chime in as well to help you out. Um, so to create an issue, um, if you go to new issue here and we have a few templates here. Let's see, get started, report a GCPy bug. And you can just fill this out. Um, you can also just ask a general question. Yep, and you can also open a regular issue if you don't like any of these templates. Um, so that's that for the issues. If you go back to the code section, you can browse all of this code See how this is doing, still going. Um, you can you can view Jupyter Notebooks in GitHub in your browser. So in the examples folder, if you explore some of these files, for example, diagnostics, we've got this compare diagnostics Python notebook. If you click on that, uh, you can browse through it. If you open this same file in your terminal with your virtual environment open, um, then you will be able to actually step through these different boxes and execute the Python. And this will take you through comparing diagnostics output from GeoSchem or GCHP, any resolution. Um, and you, it also goes through how to do this with binary diagnostics because we do um, somewhat support using the binary diagnostics in Python. We're, we rely on a third-party package for that, which we are not actively maintaining. Um, so that's just a caveat. But if you scroll down here, um, this is a lot of output, but you can look through some of the Python code. And this is an example of the types of plots that you'll see. And if you're familiar with the GeoSchem one-month benchmark, uh, for version 12, then you've seen um, plots like this before. And we have zonal mean as well. So, and uh, this also goes through how you can save your comparison plots to PDF, or you can print them to the screen. Um, you can also print them um, as pop ups using Matplotlib. But okay, so our environment has been created. Uh, you can see this message to activate this environment, use conda activate geoschem. What this is doing is tapping into the conda package manager uh, using the conda executable to activate this virtual environment called geoschem. Um, and I can check to see where this geoschem lives by actually, so if I go back to uh, which anaconda, anaconda. Uh, and then if I actually go to the Anaconda folder, I can see an ends, ends directory here. If I go into it, um, I can see GeoSchem. So I already had GCPy, that's why I didn't call it GCPy, but I just wanted to demonstrate how to create the virtual environment. Okay, so going back to where we were, I was in the demo folder, GCPy, I have my clone of GCPy. 
So now what I need to do to use GCPy is source, um, basically enable the virtual environment by doing this conda activate geoschem. So conda activate geoschem. And that doesn't work. Now, if I do source activate geoschem, let's see if that works. Yes. Okay, so if you if this conda activate geoschem does not work for you, do source activate geoschem. Um, it, it'll work the same way. So the virtual environment I have open is on the left, which is really good. If you have multiple windows open, then you always know which virtual environment you have, if any. Um, if I do Python dash dash version, I can see I have Python 3.6.8 using Anaconda. All right, so now to use GCPy, we have to take another step because Anaconda doesn't know what GCPy is. If I start using a GCPy function, it's going to say it doesn't recognize it. So in order to, to tell Python to look for functions within the GCPy folder, you have to export that path to GCPy in your Python path environment variable. So for me, I do this in my bash rc. If you do ls-a, you can see all of your hidden files in your home directory. Uh, you'll remember that the anaconda stuff was in the bash profile. The bash profile is sourced every time you get a login shell. But for me, I usually have a lot of different windows. So I put it in my bash rc, which gets sourced every time I open a new window. So let's see what it looks like. Um, in my bash rc at the very bottom here, you can see I have export python path equals dollar sign python path colon and then the path to juicy pie. So you need to put this line in your bash rc or in your bash profile if you're only going to use your login terminal. Um, or you can put it in an environment script if that's the way you set up your environment. Okay, and I can check it by doing echo python path. And there it is. Um, usually you may have multiple packages um, beyond what's in Anaconda. So this path would actually be longer and they'd be separated by colons. So um, as I mentioned, like Anaconda has these uh, has packages that are installed for this virtual environment. And if I wanted to know what they are, I can do conda list and it'll list every package I have available to me as well as the version number. And the version number is actually very important because occasionally you'll get um, some problems running a package and it's because it's become out of sync with a different package. It might have a dependency on that package that is broken because the other package version is just not compatible. Um, so Google's a good place to look for issues like that if you just like, I can almost guarantee that you'll, if there is a, um, a version mismatch, somebody's written about it somewhere on the web, and you'll find that. And then you can use the Anaconda documentation to figure out how to update your version. Okay, so we've got the virtual environment open. We've um, added GCPy to the path. Now I should be able to import gcpy. So first I'll try this at this uh, Python terminal prompt. Uh, if I just type Python, it opens up a prompt and then I should be able to do import gcpy. Let's see if it works. And it may be slow. Sometimes it's slow, uh, especially if you're on a cluster and you do this, it can be very slow, but that worked. So if I do gcpy dot tab is what I did. I can see all of my different options for functions. And here's where you can just start exploring. And in the future, there'll be another tutorial on going through some of these things. So great. Um, that works. So let's also do a Jupyter notebook. I can show you how to open this up. Oops, sorry. Okay, just type Jupyter notebook like that. Press return. It will open up in your browser. Right, and then I'm going to do 
new Python 3 notebook. And here I have a little window where I can type some Python, import gcpy, then I do shift return to execute, or you can click on this run, or you can go up to cell and pick your option to run. Um, and that worked. A number appeared here, which means it was fine. Um, if I do gcpy.tab here, nothing happens. Um, but if I hover over it, then a bunch of stuff pops up and I can see a whole bunch of options. Uh, compare single level is one of our plotting ones. I can do that. And then if I hover over it and I press shift tab, I can actually see the documentation. Um, if I do gcpy.compare level question mark and then execute the shell, the documentation will appear at the bottom and you can read through what this is. All right, so that's, that's about it for getting set up with gcpy. Um, to exit this, you can do control C and then shut down the notebook server. Um, and then to get rid of your virtual environment, do source, deactivate, and that didn't work. Deactivate, deactivate gcpy, to deactivate, there we go. You might have to fiddle with it based on your system, which one works for you. Um, yeah, so that's it. I hope that this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact the support team or definitely create an issue. Actually, we prefer you that, that you create an issue on GitHub so that other people can see your question and the response. Thanks.